Hi everyone, um, my name is Fiona, she, her pronouns. I'm a communication strategist for the Oregon Department of Human Services Child Welfare and really excited to be here today joined by Adrian, one of our experts in the independent living program and also Violet, a former uh, young person who's experienced foster care and today just really excited to learn more about the pandemic aid that is available to support uh, young people. So Adrian, if you don't mind starting us, starting us off, um, what kind of pandemic aid is available for young people and how is this different than the support usually provided by child welfare for these young adults? Um, yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Adrian Clark. I'm the Independent Living Chiefy Program Coordinator with the Youth Transitions Team, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this with you today. Um, so in the past, um, so with the Consolidated Appropriations Act, it opens the door up to be able to help young people who are in or have experienced foster care um, at age 14 up until their 27th birthday. Um, in the past, Oregon, you know, we've been able to assist uh, with independent living program um, services from age about 16 to 21. So this really opens the door um, to assisting more. Um, so we have uh, quite a few different things that, that we've been able to change a little bit for additional support. One of them being the educational and training voucher. So if you're going to college, um, university, or a trade school and receiving this voucher, um, then you have seen an increase in the amount up to $5,000. And then also we have additional funds to help support, um, to help support you if you are in need of basic needs items or anything that will help you stay in school right now. Um, and this will go through September 1st, 2021. Um, and then can expand to those receiving the educational training voucher um, through 2022 as well. Um, then we have a foster care reentry. So um, this was in Oregon's version of it. So if you are 18 to 21 and um, have left foster care during this pandemic and are really in need of more support, um you know connecting to resources if you need some financial assistance for housing some ongoing support there that we can help um, you would open a voluntary case through our oregon child abuse hotline um, and access these services and additional funding and this is also through september 21st 2022 2021 um, then after july 1st 2021 um, if you need some additional support and you're not yet 24, so age 18 to 24, um, you can, and you don't want to work with a DHS uh, caseworker, if you just need just a little bit of support here and there, then you can self-refer to your local ILP, Independent Living Program, um, and we could help you do that, uh, find which, which person, which contractor is closest to you to refer to. Um, and access services and some support, uh, funding support through them. And then we have just basic funding. So again, if you are if you experience foster care age 14 and are not yet age 27, so through September 30th, 2021, um, we can help support um, you with some needs that you may have. There are some caps um, with this funding and an application process and um, also um, you know it is needs based so so kind of letting us know how you've been affected by the pandemic and what support that you need thanks adrian yeah it sounds like there's a lot of supports available um, and different types of supports do you know where i would go as a young person to find out more details and more information about this um, yeah, so we try to keep our website updated as much as possible because things do change uh, quite a bit with this funding um, and access to the funding. So make sure to, to, to look at the website. And then also if, if you just have a question um, and you are confused, because it is confusing, 
then you could reach out to the ilp.central um, email uh, inbox that's down below. Um, and somebody from my team will definitely get back to you and answer a question, any questions that you might have. Great. And now I will go pass it on to Violet. So, uh, Violet, if you could introduce yourself and then also if you don't mind sharing about kind of your experience uh, during this pandemic and how it might be a little bit more unique or how it might be different as someone who has experienced foster care. Yeah, I'm Violet Dreyer. I, um, I recently aged out of foster care. I'm currently living on my own, but I'm a full-time college student. Um, I think one thing that was really unique for my situation is growing up in care, I already had a hard time with being social and making friends. So being, because of the pandemic, having to be home all the time, not being able to go out and go to school, not being able to go to, out and work with people and socialize. And I had to be home all the time. And mentally, that was very hard to have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, I know the mental side of things during this time has kind of been a secondary kind of impact of the pandemic and has impacted a lot of people. Um, how, how have you seen kind of the pandemic aid help young adults who have experienced foster care through their, both their like mental challenges and also maybe physical financial challenges that they have been having? So unfortunately, I haven't been able to really been able to keep in contact with a lot of people. But I know for me, I got some a little bit of money back, and I was able to put that towards fixing my car. And I adopted a pet, so that's been able to help me uh, mentally, you know, deal with that. And so having the extra funding to be able to have a cat is really beneficial for me. That's awesome. Um, so, Adrian, what does the application process look like for someone who does want to access this pandemic aid? Yeah, so we have two different ways to apply. Um, the first, if you know, if you are involved with an independent living program or a, or you have a, a caseworker, then you would go through them to access funding. Um, they would send us a form with your request on it. Um, and then we would process it here. Um, if you do not have a caseworker or are not involved in it with the independent living program, then um, we would send you an application and really it's just a form to fill out to tell us what you need and um, kind of how the pandemic has affected you because these, you know, these funds are tied to uh, pandemic support. So uh, tying it back to that. Um, and if if you're overwhelmed or if it's confusing and you just want the help of a, a supportive adult, um, we do accept and we will work with a supportive adult on your behalf as well um, to get some assistance for you. And the application process will be changing a little bit pretty soon um, and it'll be a little bit easier to access some funding uh, through a contractor because right now um, we can only send you checks. We're working on uh, being able to be able to get money to um, our young adults through different means that are easier than a uh, check. Oh, great. Like Venmo or some other. Any, anything that's like easy or want it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, and I guess to wrap up, Violet, what would you say to someone your age to kind of encourage them to access these supports and how should they access these supports? Uh, just any words of advice from you? So I would say one, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to start. There's two things I would say, you know, there's the physical and mental. And I think physically, if you need help with, you know, rent, uh, Wi-Fi bill, something with your car, food, those things are really important, but also mentally, like if you just need to buy a book for yourself or get an emotional support pet or um, be able to buy a plant that, you know, could sit in a room if you can't have pets. So just those mental things that can also make you happy too. And I think a good way of accessing that is reaching out. Um, you know, if you have your case worker, IOP worker, or 
if not someone reaching out with emailing with the link below and stuff. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, Adrian and Bud, for your time. Um, if you are a young person who is in or has experienced foster care and want to learn more about pandemic supports that are available to you, please check out the information below. Uh, it's all detailed there. And as Adrian said, um, if you have any questions or um, have any questions about the process or the application, please feel free to reach out to the ILP email address. Um, they are more than happy to help you and are available to answer those questions. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Fiona. I just wanted to follow up on something that Adrian said about contracting with a provider to be able to disperse funds in an easier way than just through checks. And I am happy to say that we have partnered since then. We have partnered with Foster Club to be able to do this. If you are a young person, um, please go to www.fosterclub.com backslash or help again that's www.fosterclub.com backslash or help and there you can fill out an application and get started with the process okay thanks take care <laughs>